So you're thinking about getting a new monitor, but you're not sure which one to choose between the Ninja 5 and the Shinobi. Well, I'm going to be pointing out the main differences between these two amazing camera monitors, and hopefully that will make your decision a little bit easier. Now, the Ninja 5 is the more popular choice, but it's a little bit on the pricier side, and you might not need all the features, so it's definitely worth watching the whole video, because you might save some Wonga. <laughs> Who says Wonga? If you want to see more comparison videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when I upload new videos. Right, let's jump in to the video. So why would you have a monitor in the first place? What's the point? Well, first of all, it's like having a bigger display screen so you can see what you're doing a little bit better. Rather than looking through one of these tiny little LCD screens for the whole day, it's much easier to see what you're doing on a larger monitor. They can often be brighter, so this is especially helpful when you're out filming in the daylight. Having a brighter monitor means you're gonna be able to see your image a lot clearer. Not all camera LCD screens display 100% of the sensor's image. What's happened before sometimes is I've thought the framing's perfect in a shot but then got home to edit and noticed there's something in the corner or on one of the sides that I didn't see because the camera LCD screen wasn't displaying the full image. So having a monitor means that you can see everything that the sensor is outputting. Then you've got extra monitoring features that your camera might not have. Things like waveforms, histograms, false colour, zebras and it's just really handy to have those extra monitoring features to make sure your image looks as good as it can do. A lot of cameras are introducing these features now, but because the screens are so small on the camera, adding extra information around that screen means that you can't see the image as well. So having it as an external feature is really good. And what I like about the features on the Atomos, for example, is they've got a thing called transparent metering or something like that, where it brings up the histogram or whatever it is, but you can see through it, so it's not too distracting. You can change the opacity, so you can still see what you're filming behind. I think that's a really clever tool. The main difference is the fact that the Ninja 5 is also an external recorder. And why would you need a recorder if your camera records straight to the SD cards? Well, there's two main reasons. So I had the Canon EOS R, which filmed 8-bit, and it looked great, but it could also send a 10-bit 422 signal out, which is basically better colours and a better image. So pairing the Ninja 5 with the EOS R, it kind of supercharged that camera. I was getting more out of it than what you're paying for, essentially. If you have something like the EOS R that can output 10-bit, but you don't want to spend money on a new camera, then this could be the way forward for you. You could get one of these monitors and you're getting a better image from the same camera. And the difference is night and day, it's highly worth doing. Now bear in mind there may be some limitations depending on what your camera can output. But secondly, you can record in different codecs depending on what your camera can output. But for example, I can do ProRes, ProRes RAW, H.265 and DNX. And ProRes is great for editing, it's just super smooth but the files are quite large. ProRes RAW is even better image, but again, the file sizes are humongous. They, they're just like, so it's not worth it really for me. I might do some stuff in the future with it just to test it out because I really haven't had a play around with that yet. So that'd be good to do. The thing to bear in mind here though, is if you want those recording capabilities, you need to get an SSD card. Now, you can buy the Atomos ones that fit flush to the chassis of the monitor, but, they're expensive, so I've linked one down below that I use, and you can get just about double the storage for about half the price, so it's definitely worth checking that one in the link below and you save even more Wong. So let's have a look at a couple of the less obvious things that you might not have thought of when it comes to these monitors. The Ninja 5 has a metal design, which is great. It's fantastic build quality, but it's a little bit heavy. So if you're concerned about the weight, then the Shinobi is actually a plastic. Now that is, I quite like that actually. It's not, it doesn't feel like a cheap plastic. It still feels good quality. And I was surprised actually. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that feels on my handheld rig. It's actually got a fan in the Ninja 5 as well to keep it nice and cool. It's a little bit loud. It's not crazy loud. It's, you can't hear it in this and it's, it's not that far away. So it doesn't affect my audio in any way. But if that is something that you are mindful of, then just 
keep that in mind. You can install LUTs into each of these camera monitors so you can preview what a specific colour is going to look like. It's nice to be able to view the footage how it's going to look in real time rather than looking at a flat log image. I don't mind a flat log image so I don't mind but some people like to put the LUTs on. I've started doing it actually. And what I like about using the LUTs on the monitor is when you're filming with a client for example and they ask to look back if they looked back at a grey flat log profile, they'd think that looks horrible. So if you've got a LUT on there and they can see this really vibrant, nice, well coloured image, they're going to be super impressed. So I do like that feature. The Shinobi doesn't have an output, so if you need that, then obviously you're going to have to go for the Ninja 5. But the Shinobi has all the same monitoring features as the Ninja 5 does, so if you just want to use it purely as a monitor, then you can save some cash there and go for the Shinobi. That's why I've done it, to be honest. Because the cameras that I'm using now can record 10-bit internally, for the second monitor, I don't really need to use the external recording. I've just got that extra monitor for my second camera so I can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Now, a big thing, I'm really pleased with this, to be honest, the Shinobi is better battery life. Because it's not recording externally, it's using less power, so the battery life is so much longer on the Shinobi. So I've tested two different batteries on the two monitors, the NPF 770 and the NPF 970. In the Shinobi, I got two hours out of the smaller battery. When I did the same test with the Ninja 5, it got to about 25 minutes and it gave me the 20% low battery warning. So you're getting roughly four times the amount on the Shinobi as what you can get with the Ninja. So that's a huge difference. I'm still at the moment testing the 970 battery and it's been going for nearly six hours and it's still going strong. Six hours. I mean, that that's great. You only need the one battery all day. Super happy with that. But even with the smaller ones, two hours isn't bad. You're probably going to be changing your camera batteries around that time anyway. So that's not bad. If you want a little bit of a smaller setup, if you're going handheld, these ones will be fine. I'll leave a link in the description so you can pick these up. So which one is right for you? I say this all the time, it comes down to your budget and your needs. They're the two main things to think about. If you've got the extra cash to spare, then why not go for the Ninja 5? Because if you ever need the external recording, even if you don't need it now, then you've got it. Maybe you'd be borrowing a camera or hiring something and you might need it, could come in handy. But if you don't have the budget and all you need is the monitoring features, save yourself nearly half the money and go for the Shinobi. Let me know in the comments which one you would go for and make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when I upload new videos so you don't miss anything. I hope this video has helped you make the decision. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.